Welcome to EE46600 6600 Autonomous UAV Flight Control. This is Dr. Frank Zhang. I'm a faculty of Electrical Engineering, Wright State University. It's my pleasure to give you an introduction to this course. The course requires a prerequisite EE4130 6130 Continuous Control Systems. We will need some basic concepts from that course, including stability, root locus, and so on. UAVs have attracted significantly increasing attention in the recent decade. There are various applications. For instance, Amazon is developing a program called Prime Air a future delivery system designed to deliver their packages to customers in less than 30 minutes. Utility companies have started to use drone for power line inspection, which has the significant benefits of cost saving, efficiency, and quality. As the TIO group predicts, over the next decade, the worldwide civil drone production will almost triple, and the worldwide military UAV production will reach almost 99 billion. So, if you are interested in this emerging technology, please join us. This course will help prepare you for a future career in this really exciting field. In this course, we will focus on a type of UAV called quadcopter, or mostly known as drone. It's a multi-rotor helicopter that is lifted and controlled by four pairs of rotors and propellers. It's mechanically simple, small size, and can conduct various maneuvers. This picture shows a UAV that is built by students in our lab. On board the UAV, we have an IMU, a control module, the ESC, and so on. Denoted as F in the picture is a motion capture system using Vicon cameras. The system is able to provide high accuracy position and attitude measurements of the UAV for control purpose. In this course, we will take you through all important steps of flight control system design. We'll start with coordinate transformations which is essential for understanding the equations of motion. This squares based system identification technique will be used to estimate key model parameters, including the torque and thrust coefficients. After obtaining a nonlinear model of the UAV, we will conduct linearization to obtain transfer function models of the UAV. These transfer function models then will be used to conduct control analysis and design, including attitude control and position control. Towards the end of the semester, the control system will be implemented and deployed to the onboard control module for real-time flight test. Next, let's take a quick look at several important topics that will be covered in this course. First, coordinate frames. As you know, the Newton's equations of motion are derived relatively to the fixed inertial Earth frame. However, vehicle motion is most easily described in the body frame. Additionally, aerodynamic forces and torques acting on the vehicle 
are most easily described in a body fixed frame. Also, our model sensors like accelerometer and gyros measure information with respect to the body frame, while GPS measures position with respect to the inertial frame. Therefore, it is necessary to understand several different coordinate systems and how to conduct transformation between these coordinate frames. With a good understanding of the coordinate frames, we will derive the kinematics and the dynamics of a rigid body and analyze aerodynamic forces and the moments involved. By integrating these components, we will obtain a dynamic model describing the vehicle's motion. This squares based system identification method will be used to estimate key model parameters, such as thrust coefficient and the torque coefficient. Then, we will have a complete nonlinear state space model describing the vehicle's dynamics. This model will be linearized to obtain transfer function models that are appropriate for classical control design. By utilizing the linear transfer function models, we will design a fully autonomous flight control system that controls the position and attitude of the vehicle during all phases of flight. The state space model of the vehicle has 12 states. The X, Y, and the Z translational position and the velocity and low pitch yaw, rotation angles, and rates. In order to control the X, Y, Z position and your angle of the vehicle, the successive loop closure method will be used. As shown in this figure, the inner loop controls the vehicle's altitude and attitude, while the outer loop is for X and Y position tracking. The thrust and torque generated by the controller will be converted to PWM signals through a mapping matrix. Each of the controller will be designed as a PID controller using the root locus method. The course culminates with UAV flight test in the lab. The photo on the right shows the first class facility we have in the lab. The figure on the left illustrates the communication architecture of the experimental system. The high-speed motion capture system of four Vicon cameras collects the position and attitude measurements of the vehicle. The ground station PC communicates with the onboard control module via Wi-Fi. The flight control software will be developed and the MATLAB simulating environment with the Cork Rapid Control Prototyping software. The MATLAB simulating models can be deployed and run on board the UAV in real time. I will conclude this introduction with a flight test video recorded by our students. If you have any question about this course, please feel free to contact me. Thank you.